Moving on with dermatology. Uh, this is probably the most high yield of all the dermatology sections that we're going to be going over. Drug-induced hypersensitivity reactions, all right? And I made a really easy to remember chart how we can compare and contrast and hopefully you guys can like make a little sense of things that you mixed up commonly, all right? First, let's start off with urticaria. First things first, when does urticaria usually happen? It's a few minutes immediately after contact with an allergen, okay? Food allergies usually fit into this category. Now, how am I gonna distinguish between acute urticaria and chronic urticaria? Time, okay? Chronic urticaria, six weeks or more, okay? Less than six weeks acute, persistence over six weeks, chronic urticaria, all right? What's my treatment? This is where it gets tricky, right? First, you wanna identify your triggers and limit exposure to these triggers, all right? But my first line pharmacotherapy is actually diphenhydramine, Benadryl, okay? If it's life-threatening, you're gonna add systemic steroids. So first, we gotta identify trigger triggers, limit exposure, first line diphenhydramine, add systemic steroids, all right? Next, we move to erythema multiforme. What do I want you to remember for this? Target-like lesions, okay? They're gonna occur on the palms and the soles, and the most important predisposing factor is herpes. However, it can also happen in mycoplasma, okay? Mycoplasma is sometimes asked as well. Fungal diseases is, are, are also implicated but not commonly tested on the exam. Now, herpes is the most common, mycoplasma is also tested, okay? It can also be caused by drugs such as sulfa, phenytoin, barbiturates, penicillin, and allopurinol, all right? Treatment, erythema multiforma, first line diphenhydramine. Remove underlying cause, treat the underlying infection, all right? Next, let's go on to this painful disease, Steven Johnson syndrome. What do we remember? S, S, Steven Johnson syndrome, sulfa drugs, all right? Steven Johnson syndrome, sulfa drugs. That's commonly, that's your most common right there, okay? It presents similar toxic epidermal necrolysis, but it's a milder form, okay? So look at the presentation, milder form. Why? Because it's only going to involve 10 to 15% of your total body surface, all right? Sulfur drugs, okay? Also antibiotics, penicillins, phenytoin, phenobarb, and NSAIDs can cause it, all right? Treatment, this is very high yield, guys. Admission to the burn unit with removal of the offending agent. Gotta support them with IV and symptomatic treatment. Symptomatic meaning NSAIDs, etc. okay? But you gotta admit these patients to the burn unit. It's crucial, all right? So we said Steven Johnson's is a milder form of what? toxic epidermal necrolysis. Now, why is this a more severe form? Look at the amount of body area it affects. 30 to 100% body area, okay? Um, it's much more severe than Steven Johnson's and it has a positive Nikolsky sign. What is a Nikolsky sign? Nikolsky sign is actually skin peeling off with pressure. Where else are we gonna see Nikolsky sign. Everybody, anybody ever heard of pemphigus vulgaris? You remember that? Pemphigus vulgaris, you also get a positive Nikolsky sign. Just means you're gonna put a little pressure on the skin and the skin's gonna slough off, okay? Diagnosis, it's a clinical diagnosis, all right? Most accurate diagnostic test, skin biopsy. Once again, we're seeing that skin biopsy is our most accurate diagnostic test. Treatment, remove the offending agent, and we want to manage these bad boys in the burn unit and the ICU as well. Remember, how are we going to tell these two apart? They're both going to present the same. This one, 10 to 15% of the total body surface area. This one, 30 to 100%, okay? This one, positive Nikolsky sign, all right? Both of them are going to get admitted to the burn unit, support and management. What's interesting about this one, second line is actually IVIG for toxic epidermal necrolysis. IVIG can be used second line, all right? Next, erythema nodosum. Everybody remembers erythema nodosum. When do we see that? We remember it as a buzzword, sarcoidosis, right? And we use, usually remember it's in the shins, right? It's not only in sarcoidosis, actually. It's actually most commonly due to a streptococcal infection, all right? Now, um, it presents as tender nodules on the shins that are smooth and shiny. All right, they can occur, occur anywhere there's fat under the skin, including the thighs, arms, trunk, and face. Most common is strep. So if our most common cause is strep infection, how are we gonna work them up? 
CBC, ESR, anti streptolysin O, urinalysis, throat culture, TB test, CX, chest x ray. All right? This is the most important thing. Anything that's bold is the most important thing to know for the exam, okay? Most commons is huge on the exam as well. Treat the underlying disease as well as analgesics and NSAIDs. And those that don't respond to initial therapy, potassium iodide, all right? So this is your step three question right here. This is your step three question right here. This is your step two probably. This is your step two. This might be your step two, but these are your step three questions they, they like throwing at you, your second lines or when they don't respond to initial therapy. Fixed drug reaction. Look at the words. Fixed drug reaction. It's fixed. Fixed. Okay. So why is it named this way? Because it, they recur at the same to site every time you have exposure to that particular medication. All right. Um, these drug the, the these these drug eruptions are usually when drugs are taken intermittently, and they're usually sharp, demarcated lesions, and they're hyper pigmented after the resolution of your symptoms. All right. And they occur in the same spot every single time. So they're pretty easy, all right? And you want to discontinue your offending agents and give topical steroids, all right? So urticaria, what do I want you to remember? Most important thing, overview. Six weeks, chronic has to be at least six weeks. Identify your triggers, give diphenhydramine. If it's life-threatening, you go to systemic steroids. Erythema multiforme, target-like lesions, herpes simplex, can also happen with mycoplasma, all right? They like asking about mycoplasma on the test as well. Diphenhydramine, remove the underlying agent. Steven Johnson's and toxic epidermal necrolysis, they present very similar. What are you going to look at? The percent of body surface affected. 15 to, 10 to 15 at Steven Johnson's, 30 to 100 in toxic epidermal, okay? Both of them get admitted to the burn unit, but second line for ne toxic, toxic necro, uh, epidermal necrolysis, IVIG. Erythema nodosum, when we know it from sarcoid, but most common strep, got to do the strep lysin O, treat the underlying disease, of course, as well as NSAIDs. Those that don't respond, potassium iodide. Fixed drug happens exactly at the same spot every time they're exposed, okay? After the resolution, they get hyperpigmentation in that area. You want to discontinue the offending agent and add topical steroids. And I know we went over this a little bit fast, but you know how YouTube is. Got to limit the time, I think, under 10 minutes, all right? So hopefully you got these two these down. These are probably your most high yield derm questions you're gonna get asked on the exam.